thanks for coming to see us. We'd like to give a little presentation this morning to talk a little bit about high-speed steels. Specifically, what we'd like to talk about this morning is a little bit about the process of um, differentiating among them and picking a high-speed steel that works better than perhaps what you might be using to start with. Um, we'd like to introduce ourselves a little bit. I'm with uh, Aerosteel. Aerosteel here in the U.S. is a distribu distribution arm for Aerosteel based in France. Aerosteel is a manufacturer of high-speed steels, primarily high-speed steels for cutting tools, but also some powder steels for tooling op um, operations as well. In addition to being a distributor of steels for industrial applications, we are, as I said, a mill. We make the steel. We have uh, research and development facilities to manufacture um, small quantities and developmental things and come up with new products. Uh, and we provide services to help in the use of our products as we go through. So I go through and just uh, as a background show a little bit about what we do. We are a manufacturer. We make all of our own steel. We distribute it through our own network. We have a few other distributors as well, but primarily through Air Steel's direct uh, operations. Our main production units there are in Sweden and France. The location here in Chicago in Romeoville, uh, marked on the map, is our primary U.S. location for sales of the PM and high-speed steel. We also sell out of the warehouse in New Jersey, in Boonton in New Jersey, primarily conventional high-speed steels from that warehouse. Um, as I said, we make uh, primarily high-speed steel. We make a lot of different grades. As a, a ballpark idea, this covers the range of the products we sell. There's nothing worth specifically noting about an individual grade, but just to give an idea that we make a lot of different grades. And so the purpose of the uh, presentation here this morning was to talk a little bit, not so much about the specific grades, but about why we make so many and what the differences are and why you would pick one versus the other. And from that standpoint, the reason we make so many different grades is each of them is designed to have a little different set of properties for use in a tooling operation. Some are designed to have a little bit higher hardness. Some are designed to resist abrasion better than others. Some are designed to resist softening when they get hot. And each of the grades has a unique combination of those properties. And the reason for carrying so many is to have grades that will suit different applications. And the reason for the presentation is to talk a little bit about how a customer would go through picking a suitable grade for an application. And we'll talk a little bit about the properties, but primarily use this presentation as an excuse to uh, come up with a method for picking one grade if another grade isn't doing everything that's desired. And that gets into the grade selection. When we talk about grade selection, all of our grades are differentiated in our minds by their chemistries. We know that this grade has so much cobalt, that grade has so much vanadium. That's how we differentiate them uh, internally. Externally, we differentiate them by their properties, which one is suitable for different kinds of applications. So what we'll do is we'll look at the properties from this standpoint. When we look at high-speed steels, they fall in this area here in the center, the blue area. They're not quite as high in hardness as cemented carbides or solid uh, hard metal tooling. They're harder than other tool steels. Their toughness is better than carbides. So for applications where carbides are too brittle, high-speed steels are the next best uh, operation or, or uh, product to work with. But that gives an idea of a range of properties, how they might fit. And as I said, we look at them as a basket of chemicals, cobalt, vanadium, tungsten, and molybdenum. We figure that the grade is going to be determined by its chemistry, but the performance of the tool is ultimately going to be determined also by the structure, by how the material is manufactured mechanically as well as how it is fabricated into a tool, primarily with heat treatment but also with anything else that will affect it uh, thermally or mechanically. This presentation we're going to talk strictly about the grades by chemistry, how we de designate them and how we pick one of them. Um, some of the other microstructural characteristics we'd be happy to talk to you about uh, afterwards if you have an interest in that. When we look at high-speed steels, we basically start from a couple of very basic, uh, call them the Ur high-speed steels. Uh, the T1 designation there was the first high-speed steel that was uh, commercially developed and designated. T standing for tungsten and M standing for moly. Tungsten and moly are the two main constituents of almost all high-speed steels. To get that long list of other grades, what we typically do is we would take those basic T1 or M1 or M2 types and we would add elements to them. In one case we might add vanadium, 
It tends to give them more carbides or more wear properties. It lowers their toughness, but it makes them more wear resistant. Uh, typically, these grades might be used for slower cutting speed tools that don't have to cut any faster than the simple grades, but that have to wear longer. Uh, one of the side benefits is not only are they, or one of the side issues is not only are they more wear resistant, they also are a little more difficult to grind. Um, the alternative is we can add cobalt high speed steels. That makes them uh, more resistant to softening when they get hot. Essentially that means you can take a rotating tool and cut it at higher rotating speeds so that you can create more frictional heating and not let the tool soften in service. The benefit of that is, although you don't increase the abrasion resistance per se, you do increase the speed or heat that the tool can perform at. So you can develop tools that can cut faster for more efficient cutting. And ideally it would be nice to add both to be able to make the tools cut faster and last longer. Um, they would more approach the properties of carbides in that case, but with high speed steels it's just not practical. It, if you get too much alloy content in the steel, the structure is just too um, messed up to be able to hold together practically and make a good tool. The reason is the constituents don't stay uniformly dissolved within the steel and it just creates a structure that's not very uniform that can have very great difficulties with chipping or cracking as well as some big problems with grinding. So typically there's a limitation to how much can be put in. At Aerosteel, to combat this limitation, we developed a powder metal practice for making steel uh, back about 40 years ago. It was really developed commercially into a standard line about 30, 35 years ago. And what we do is instead of making steel a conventional way by pouring it into a big pot and making big castings and beating them into the size we want, we make a big pot of liquid metal and we spray it into a powder and then just combine the powder into a solid. It skips a process in the steel where the liquid freezes into a big solid casting. The only reason for doing that is this is the structure that we get when we make high alloy high speed steels full of wear resistant and heat resistant elements. It's what we call segregated, it's not uniformly distributed. If we make it by the PM process, we simply make the same constituents more uniformly dissolved and more uniformly spread through the steel. It has a couple of benefits we can add more alloying element to it before we come to the condition where there's too much to be practically usable. We can increase the toughness because we get away from that, call it something about grain orientation on the left, and we can make them a little bit easier to machine and grind because we don't have so many big chunky particles that are tough on tooling and grinding wheels. So it prevent, presents us with the possibility that previously the blue area in the center is the properties of high speed steels. The red area on the top is the properties of the PM manufactured high speed steels. We can essentially make the same kind of hardness and wear properties but with increased toughness. Or we can take a certain level of toughness and get higher hardness or wear properties without giving up toughness. So it allows a little wider range of properties in high speed steel. It extends the useful range of cutting speeds and materials that can be cut before you have to start looking into uh, carbides or ceramics.